What's up with you, bro? Hey, I'm doing good. How you doing, young man? I am one of the thirds of the streets of Blind City Podcast. And uh, what we do is take an uh, opportunity to present everybody that don't really know what's going on in the streets to bring them to dig the streets. Okay. See, you got one point you always had with um, Lane Cunningham. I'm knowing it, Mr. D. I came in when the world was still young and dumb. Uh-huh. When they first had the opportunity to put a lot of people up and stack buildings. Mm-hmm. Put so many people in one area. Stack, yeah, stack here. Projects. The they call them no. projects. Uh-huh. And in them projects, you got what? Multi million personalities. Yes. Sir. Some homes had nine or 15 kids in them. Mm-hmm. You had eight million in your family, you call a small family. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, small eight, family. That was small family. That's right. <laughs> so you got to understand how many women one year behind each other. You had brothers that were three years older, the same grade as sisters. You didn't mm-hmm. the same family members because you could how can be there? Right. He's three years older and in the same grade, he failed a lot. Right. See, back in the time they didn't push you out of there because they wanted you to get the education. Yeah. So then they came up with this idea of all these together, they put these products together. Cocker, fine, good, and I go. In the village called Square. Uh-huh. What happened was that there were too many people of the same kind of culture in the same area, but not enough resources to go around. Uh-huh. So when you got the crime got come up, I gotta make one of you. You got a job, go to work. I'm gonna bring in your phone while you go. He's like, I'm just telling you what it is. Get in there while you're gone. <laughs> okay, get in while you're gone. It got to a point where you couldn't leave your apartment. Everybody couldn't go. Uh-huh. Somebody, somebody got to be there. Somebody got to stay at home. See, before you came out, you think all pages, these cell phones, what no communication like what you got to have. You call back to a thing called a land based phone. Yeah. You know, land line. Land line. This is land based. You ain't going no everywhere and call back one year because you're phone to call somebody. Yeah. So if you have opportunity to get somebody where they can't get back to you, you're going to take advantage of it. That's what the beast was in some uh-huh. projects. But a lot of things you want in the conversation, you want to ask me about now. I'm going to let you know that. Uh, I go started off in 52. Some people say it got finished in 54. That's 54, wrong. yeah. That was the place that move in date. Move in date, but it was completed in 52. Really? <laughs> they didn't give it, it was a small, it was called a soft opening for the only white people to do it, do things with. Damn. Now, once it got around there, other people didn't want to get all the whites they wanted in there. That was in 54, sir. Two years after the they started putting yeah. the whites. Yeah. So when the blacks started coming in, they came up in buckboards. They had, they had all kind of needles pulling their wagons. Yeah, mm-hmm. come out of the south. Yeah. They had no idea what they could run into because it was totally better way up here uh-huh. than north. So what happened was that they came in with no culture, with the white folks didn't know about them. Same right. thing, two different, different cultures put together. put together. Somebody got to come up victorious, somebody got to move out. <laughs> in 1959, I made a white family left in the pool. So they all moved out there. All had to go. It's hard you try to go to school in the morning and you think your daughter been in school all day, but she doesn't have to park around the street getting raped all morning. Ooh. That's the difference, man. Oh, man. See, you weren't strong in the fight. I had to come in on Saturday and move out of next Saturday. Couldn't make it. Uh-huh. They thought it was something different, but they didn't ride. The girls and any son might have been riding. Like you said, the community with no resources. No resources, but nothing. <laughs> so it, you came in, you was like a hustle. Right. You started with the early body. So everybody caught it with the first wave, they got to be a little more connected. They all got to be cool each other. We had a fight, let us cut back. Now we got to convince some on there. So all the new people come in, they just pray. Right, right. <laughs> they don't know the they don't know the area here. They don't know. They don't know the ropes. They don't know people's around. Right. So what you gonna do? There was a thing come out right say only the strong survive. Uh-huh. And the weak was gonna go to the side. So my knowledge of all that downtown from Jefferson to Seventh Street, uh-huh. from Old Fountain to Cass. It's all that's, projects here. That's, that's me. I'm there. It's just like the vine, say the Pura Dagos, and um, Quartzware Village. We don't forget me. Cochran. Cochran, that's right. Like, um, and like a lot of people don't know, that's like where like most of like the notorious gangsters of St. Louis like kind of sprung up at. We came from. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we all got our starts, baby. When you had to move out, you had to move money. The ones that want to leave, mm-hmm. they branched out in the West End. Mm-hmm. All the camp but they still came downtown. Yeah, yeah. They all came out of the projects. Yep. They all grew the project. Some didn't want to leave because they didn't want to deal with the money program. Right. So you go out there, it's space wide. But in that day, it was just wide. Uh-huh. They couldn't see it good. But now they can pinpoint like this. You can't put a thousand dollars in the bank. Or you got to report it. 
Right. <laughs> when this world got here, then y'all would have gotten one of this fall. Yeah. In my day, one of this guards, you got rid of everything because it couldn't keep it out of me. Right. You start breaking things down, pinpointing it. You know, you think all the cell phone, make you talk all this thing, make you do all that. Yeah, yeah. When you got this big, and you have no idea what's going on over there, and you talking. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, um, just say, like, speak, like, you say, like, Cockham Gardens and, like, Priago, that's, um, what, what's his name? Fat Cat. Fat Woods came up over on Sheridan, him and all, before they even built the party. We all came in the party, happily uh -huh. built it. I remember when Earl and Woods been friends for a long time. They about 14, 15 years old, we were going to buy the watermelon trucks. Okay. When watermelon trucks come down the street, the cold trucks come down the street, you know, the guy selling them dog food and coons, he come down the street in them trucks. Yeah. The dog law, like, red line, water, brother. <laughs> come down, give me watermelon. <laughs> All right, Mr. Bush, what are y'all? 16, I'm on 13, I'm on 4. Well, before we gone, they went on tour. But when the prodigies did, see, there was always a single family home there. Yeah. And then you got a cold brother stole, the cold man come down. Lock, go, lock, go. Everybody got that. Now all of a sudden they saying, they opened it up, these Apartments down here, but everybody started what? Putting in a plan as same as how they thought it. Yeah. Everybody run down there. Right, right. What? Our house. You got indoor plumbing. Mm -hmm. You got indoor heat. Mm -hmm. Ready to eat. Season up. <laughs> you might be looking at them, them bricks what they call uh, cell blocks. Yeah. You know, cell blocks go on when they shoot at night. They're on the floor. It's concrete. Yeah. Everything yeah. like concrete. But you're living good. You're big rugs. But when the killer part of the was that, they didn't know what was building there. How does it was built a city within a city. That's what happened. Right. So when you saw the other resources coming in, then when the man come in and dropped the big thing in, he said, here's some dope on y'all to take out and drop it around everybody so you do it. Don't worry about that. Keep that one. But the next one we're going to take over and you're going to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. But right now, found what you can do with it. He dropped the bomb in there. And when they do it, they found what you can do it. Right. And when you knew it, the drug game was on. Heroin and cocaine started rolling. Marijuana was a thing to pass. Yeah. They didn't want to weed no more. It was, like, it was like 19, it was like 70s to 60s. It's 1963, brother. Uh-huh. It started changing in. The world had got to, get to catch up. Time to kill Kennedy in 63. Right. I was in grade school. And when the world started changing in 1970. Yeah. Oh, who the world ends? Yeah. See, in 1970. Two, they killed the Nineteen seventy-two. That's um, like the worst. Like, well, sixty-nine was the worst summer of the, you know, St. Louis. But seventy-two is like in this, in that was well, from June to like August. It's like, there's like a war going on, like from Prairie Vine and the Cochran, and the Cochran, all of that. That's right. That's right. The fifty-two to seventy-two, all up there. Twenty years. I don't think that probably there for twenty years. Uh -huh. They've been around for the last sixty because with the impact it done. Mm -hmm. So man, the rent strike. It started off with sixty-eight. Because they wouldn't fix it no more, they wanted everybody to do all that kind of stuff. But they played the game on it. So Jerry White, the moment they sent out, because okay, they got the media, got everybody, we're going to fix all of everything. We're going to strike money, point to the first Brooke Gilkey. She was taking care of the children all at that time. And she makes all the money went to a bank. So you'd be covered with your problems. You had no problems. Your assessment wouldn't time to come to you about putting you on anything. Right. So then they came to the head. They started fixing one. The ready, he started getting back in good. They painted up things they need to be with. They started peeing all the dirt. To a better car out of the project, out of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And as soon as she had that money, they sent a letter to everybody say, Tell them not to convict her. <laughs> so y'all were still living in the project. They were all living there, they had to go somewhere to find somebody because as soon as she turned that money over, it wasn't 24 hours later, they shut down the proof. Really? <laughs> Anyways, no time. No time. Like, um, let's like, talk about like the, like your experience, like growing up in the crew that I go. Well, my experience was rough because we was a family of, of gangsters. Mm -hmm. yeah, my, 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 I didn't know where a lot of things were. You said you, you, you didn't grow up in the prairie, but you hang got I hung out in the car. That's where the best work was, the big project. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the Congress and Congress law. Then it was a, a good thing to get. Mm -hmm. But when I had to do what I had to do when I was in there, I had to go because see, I, before they built the cock and all that, I was already in the world. Before they built, you know, the right. cock and all I built, before they built, pulled out, I was already, I came in 1950. So okay. I was all here. But the thing is that my people had to go through that step by step program through it. So it was just like, and you down, you got a business. Gotcha. You want the knowledge of it, get it. You don't want to go stand on that. <laughs> so I want to know the knowledge of the business. So it was passed down to my and my, my stepfather. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that was the best thing going. You smart. So I'm going to get my life together. I'm going to make sure things are going good for me. So you got the was there for you. But all of the letters they played, all these lies they tried to say were down, that ain't where everything went. Yeah. You know, T.J. Ruffin. T.J. Ruffin. T.J. Ruffin, he didn't run for the mayor, didn't he? No, he tried to run for the mayor. He, he knew what he was about. He knew what time it was, but, but he got the game 
And he, but when the game got real good, he was like 44 years old, 43. Yeah, he's like, he was real good. Yeah, he's like, so he wouldn't go back to pitching no more. Yeah. He, he told me he wouldn't go back. He told me, I'm going out of body bag. And that's how he went. Yeah, he yeah. He didn't He died out of UC. Yeah. Him and his um, girlfriend. Right. Right. Yeah. In the body bag. Yeah, yeah. They had a shootout the police. And shootout with the police. And then they came out. Suicide. Yeah. And mission. He had one, she had one. Mm hmm. They shot each other. They shot each other. And what they kept shooting, they hear what shoots out of them, the shots coming from the apartments. That's when they went in. Right. Before they went there, they shot five now. They didn't get them out. So they put the five went in, they tried to move them dead. That's all they do, they kill them. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't say he wasn't going back. So he gave him his money one. He said, I ain't going back. He ain't going back. He shot to you, they don't have a mission. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how they poison my head. I know two of them scooter boogers didn't, didn't, didn't make it. <laughs> it was yeah. called a uh, motorcycle, we called scooter boogers. Okay. They couldn't make it. So he told me that dude, once he done that, it was all over, man. You get to kill you today, they kill us worse than then they do now. Right. So they kill them then worse than they do they now. They kill us worse oh, than then they do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Boys been killed us a long time, you know, man. See, we stopped riding on the motorcycles because we started shooting back. Right. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. Fuck that. We started shooting back. <laughs> that's what made them get out on more motorcycles. They ain't been around no more. You got to be inside bulletproof glass cars now. I said they had it, they can run on a motorcycle. No more. I don't think they're not But it was it, too open. We should shoot back at And that when they got the, the Vietnam War, they called it the Vietnam Bill in the uh -huh. We had a standoff for 48 hours with maybe. 40 hours? 48 hours, two days almost with, I think about 26 different times the police come in on ship changing. Because uh -huh. see, where the buildings are made, you only got two inches. You got a back door and a front door. And it's just. And it's too high to get me. I thought, well, they didn't have no helicopters back then. Yeah. We were young and dumb in 1964, 65, it was That would have been 68. So we got two shoes on this man, two shoes by the doors, and they got ammunition on there, so they couldn't get in the building. Right. The building was too tall. The next building too, was too short. They were seven foot, and it's all 12 foot. Right. So they couldn't get nowhere to that. They go away, it still was in bad shape. They right. still was. Elevation shooting down is better. So it's like we did long. So they got to, they know I want it done. Right. So once it got done, the next day went in there, searched every floor, all the way up. Couldn't find no guns. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what they don't know. They don't know what they don't know. They don't know what we got. They don't know the neighborhood. They don't know it. That's right. And they went to every one of the gangs they knew in the building, they do it first. Right. Putting stuff in the hands, they shoot all that stuff out there. We still don't know when they stop. Oh, they all good or what? Because they have no knowledge of it. But they were done. They was all good because the guy that orchestrated he got schooled by them in the Vietnam War. He did two years old after. A lot of veterans. Learned tactics. Learned tactics. That's right. And he brought a game back to Cotton. Cotton got larger then. And had a shootout with Earl Jr. And Fat Woods because they wanted to get the territory down there, but they couldn't. Are you trying to take over the cocky? They want to take over cocky. They want to keep cocky. What happened? Uh -huh. Cocky fought back. Vaughn, they got the Vaughn. The village wasn't like that. The cocky was Vaughn was like, um, Cross Square. Was like, no, Cross Square. Square. The village was no. Cross Square. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, um, the Vines. It was like, um, Ronald Scott. Yeah, yeah, Ronald Scott. Uh -huh. You know that? Yeah, Ronald Scott. Who was the man there? That's right. Yeah. Now, you heard that? That's true. Ronald Scott took care of the Vaughn. He was in charge of the Vaughn. The VTO. The VTO. You had Woods, the food that was. Scott had the vine mm -hmm. and the village, and he had uh, Lincoln had the cockney. Okay. So when they tried to. You said, what was the man that had the cockney? Liggins. His name Ligans. was John okay. Liggins. They weren't going to give it up. And he got the team was out and we all doing our thing. That was our, that was our meeting, bread. We can't, we can't do this. He take all our people from We can't do that. So right. it got to be a war. But we got a bit of war because he was kind of cocky. It was like 19 to the 60s and then. This was the basic war. We got things broke down in 1966. Everybody right killed King in 68. Okay. So they killed King. Everybody started seeing, well, we're no unity with our world. We all just, we were. So we don't know who killed King. They ain't tell us about that time. It was yeah. white people did. So we figured it was some black folks got together. I deal with Martin. But they deal with Malcolm X. Yeah. So then they snapped. But the money was still there. Everybody wanted to control the money. Right. That's why we went to one down. That's why the war went down. But it all came down where we all walked down, I go back over there, and all three of them called. There was enough money, enough stuff to go around for everybody. Right. So it calmed down. Then you got the individuals that were spring out to the West End. And like yeah. West Bay area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I got the time. Everywhere. All out there. They want to be sure that they want to get their program spot there before everybody start coming out of the, the projects, taking over the little territory. Mm -hmm. And they go over. They give them to them. 
Well, that's yeah. how all the extra gangsta got out of there. So going everywhere, doing everything you see around there, came out in downtown. That's why they called it the Pruitt and Nigel Kingpin, but it was really the downtown King Kingpin. It was definitely like, um, let's say, like, Fair Woods, he's like Robin Hood, Pruitt, I go. He took care of him, he took care of him, he took care of you. See, uh -huh. enough money, he didn't never want number one, he said, he had two apartments down there. What he wanted to do was make sure they could take care of him, and control everything. That's what he's trying to do with city in the city. Mm -hmm. You couldn't say nothing bad about him. You couldn't find him. He didn't stand right next to you like he's sitting there. If you know what he looked like or who he was, what I can tell you. Right. <laughs> That's where he was. Yeah. It was good. Raw to them. Yeah. I wish I could go on a little bit longer, but I got another point I must take care of, and I got to be in with it. But if any other time you want to continue conversation, just call me. And you can find me on YouTube, anywhere, and we get Blind City Podcast, and you'll find us, and we'll be right there.